Hey you guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Today we're going to go over the elusive method on how to take an inexpensive diode laser and burn images onto tile. This is not just any image. This is an indelible image. Scraper, tile, tile, scraper. Doesn't scrape off. I'm gonna show you how to do it right here, right now on 3D Print Farm. Let's do this. Hey guys, full disclosure here. This is not my technique, but this is the Norton white tile method invented by a gentleman by the name of Nicky Norton. He is the by far the all-time expert on placing indelible images on white tile painted white. So again, full credit goes to Mr. Nicky Norton. Thank you, sir. Let's get this started. Hey guys, today we're gonna to be using the Ortur Laser Master 2 from GearBest. What I really love about this machine is the 400 by 430 millimeter engraving area. You can engrave a one foot by one foot ceramic tile if you want. This thing is huge. Took me about 20 minutes to put together. A lot of really cool safety features that are built into this machine. I really love it. If you would like to pick up one of these, head on over to GearBest. I'll put links in the description below. Before we get started, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need a container of acetone. I prefer acetone over paint thinner because, frankly, the paint thinner tends to absorb in this porous tile. You can see the back of the tile is porous and it'll absorb that paint thinner and, frankly, it stinks, so I don't use it. I pick these 4x4, four 4, four inches by 4 inches tiles up at Lowe's and a big box in the average about 13 cents a piece and I got a microfiber cloth what you want to do is take a little bit of the acetone and clean the tile really well because these tiles when they get produced they have some type of a film on them so you want those completely cleaned off so first step clean your tile next thing I like to do is take a can of Rust-Oleum Gloss White. And you're probably saying, yeah, but Garrett, I've seen them use Flat White. Flat White works great as well, but I tend to have better luck with Gloss White. To prevent getting uh, fish eyes or splatter is you'll want to start around right here. You want to activate your paint a little bit, shake it up. You want to start here, spray across, across, Something like this. And you want to use uh, overlapping motion. And this is exactly how much paint you'll need. Not a lot. That's it. Okay, you guys, let's get started. We're going to be using Lightburn today. There are other uh, laser software choices out there, but I prefer Lightburn. So before you do anything, after you start up Lightburn, you'll want to go to the Edit menu go down here to device settings and in the other options section you want to make sure that the enable laser fire button is turned on and what this allows you to do is to turn on the laser at low power so you can focus your laser so once you do that and click OK you'll have to restart Lightburn because the button is not going to show up unless you restart Lightburn if you'll move over here You'll see all these tabs, cuts, layers, move, console, shape, properties. Click the move button and you'll see that the fire button is now, that the fire button is activated and I've got the power set at 0.50%. Now this is going to be really important when you're focusing your laser because what you're, what you're going to want to do is we're going to be lasering on tile. So this tile has to be the correct length from the beam to the tile. So this distance in here has to be focused to the tile. So the focusing distance to this wood is going to be a little bit different. So if you were lasering on the wood, it would have a, a different focal length than on the tile. So since we're going to be lasering on tile using the white tile method, what we want to do is I'm going to get a piece of black construction paper. This could be black cardstock as well. 
Reason why I chose black is because the, the blue beam shows up really well on black. Put your laser goggles on and come back over here, click your fire button. What that's going to do is that's going to activate the laser. You see the laser is now activated and you'll see a small blue dot. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to adjust this laser focusing ring down here. And that is either clockwise or counterclockwise. The idea is to get that dot as small as your eye can detect. Now with the Ortur Laser Master 2, which I'm using the 15 watt version, which is around four and a half watts output as far as laser power is concerned, it may show a tiny line versus a round dot. No big deal, you wanna make sure that line is small as small as your eye can see. That's just the starting point. That will get you to the next step that we're going to discuss, which is trying to even hone that focusing down even greater. So this is step one. Focus that beam on a black piece of cardboard. Step two, get you a piece of pink uh, cardstock, anything that's a, a even a, 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 maybe a tan or a green, something that you'll be able to actually actually burn into. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna turn this, I'm gonna turn the laser off. And what you'll wanna do in light burn is go over here and use the rectangle tool. And you'll wanna create a small rectangle, okay? After I select the small rectangle, I just click the little select button up here, and I've selected it. You can actually resize it in millimeters so I, I'm gonna choose, it doesn't really matter here, you can choose a five by five by 10 maybe. And if these numbers are moving together, it's because this padlock is locked and they are, um, they're, the, these numbers are both changing so you can unlock the padlock. Okay, and so the idea is, is go into your cuts layers, make sure that the mode is set to fill line, and I'm gonna open this up and I've got my speed set to 1200 millimeters per minute with a max power of 10%, which this is a good starting point for paper. And I set my line interval to 0.11. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why did you set it, your line interval to 0.11, Garrett? Well, we're gonna talk about that in step three. So, first thing you'll wanna do is, since you have that set up, 1200 millimeters per minute at a max power of 10%. Click the OK button, and you're gonna to wanna to go through and start the burn. And what you're gonna do is you're going to burn successive rectangles on this cardstock. Now, in between each successive rectangle, you're going to want to turn this knob just a little bit. As you can see, all six of these rectangles encompasses less than a quarter of a turn between all six of those. So I mean, I'm turning it just a little bit, either clockwise or counterclockwise. And as you can see, especially this one guy right here, you know, as you can see, that's a, a really light one compared to some of these others. So, I mean, this, this kind of tells you how sensitive this focusing wheel can be. And it's real hard to do it with the naked eye, but once you, uh, the, the, the actually, the, the burn doesn't lie. So by turning it just a little bit, just a hair, again, all six of these are done with less than a quarter of a turn, you're gonna find the ideal sweet spot on paper that shows you the best burn, which is gonna be somewhere in here. Once you do that, just leave it alone. You've set your, you've set your laser for tile. Remember, you haven't set it for the board here. The board's a different, it has a different focal point than or a focusing point than tile. We've set it for tile because that's what we're that's what we're doing today. So now on to step three, we're going to use a sacrificial white tile. You can see these numbers here: 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10. Then you can see that 0 0.11 we talked about. As you see, they, be, they become successively successively darker between each one. Now, where those numbers come in are over in here. So if we look here, you'll see the line interval, 
which the line interval is the spacing between successive lines emitted by the laser. So I had mine set to point 110. Now what I did is I basically reburned all those rectangles successively into the tile and I adjusted this number and as you can see the lines per inch change so there's point zero eight zero again I went through and I adjusted it and as you can see that really makes a difference in how dark that rectangle is in fact somewhere between point one one point one two and even point one three you're getting the best burn on to white tile in fact, I went over here and I changed the actual power, which if you look over here, I have it set, well, this guy here, this was set for paper, remember, but now I'm gonna change it to 85%. This is what I changed for tile. I did an 85% burn. In fact, all of these were 85% burned, with the exception of these guys right here. This was a 75% burn at 0.11 line interval. This was a 65% burn at 0.1 line interval. Now again, this is on a, again, this is on flat white. I've had really good luck with flat white, but I seem to have better luck with Krylon gloss white. Now let me show you the gloss white. This is the gloss white tile, okay? So this is 1200 millimeters per minute at 85% burn, and that's the 0.11 line interval you can see 85, even 75. I mean, even 75 is almost as dark as 85. 65, you get a little bit lighter. And of course, 55, you get even, even lighter. So I wouldn't choose 55, but I would choose 75% because you really don't want to overburn the tile, but I think this is going to be a good choice. So yes, step three is setting that line interval correctly, setting your power, and getting your laser super super focused as you can hear my dogs barking in the background so the next step you'll want to do is select an image now i i like the movie uh, mad max fury road in particular the, the one of the characters mr tan joe here so what i did is i i typed in mr tan joe in the google image search and i searched for particular images uh I did not use a large image here, but a quick trick in Google image search is if you click the tools button over here, it will drop down this little um, uh, pop-up. You can click on the size button here and choose large because you really want the biggest size possible uh, because that, that helps with your resolution of your laser. So I'm not gonna do that today, but because this is the image that I selected, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to just click uh, copy image that puts it out on my clipboard. Again, this is just a quick and dirty way of doing this. I'm going to open up GIMP and I'm going to get this thing cranked up and I am going to choose a new file. I'm going to do a four by four size on my canvas because that's the size of my tile and I'm going to click OK and then I'm just going to do a control V to paste the image that I had in my clipboard so you can see it's kind of small some of the image is going to be um, the resolution is going to be kind of kind of blown out but again this is this this technique is kind of subjective as however you guys prepare your images in Lightburn I'm sure you guys have probably a lot better ways to set your image up in, in um, uh, to set your image up for laser burning not necessarily light burn but whatever program that you're using you have lots better ways to set this up this is just as how how I do it so again quick and dirty way what I'm going to do is I'm going to click uh, shift s it's the scale button and I can actually scale this image out and I'm just going to do a really quick way here uh, move it around and get it kind of centered here and I'm going to click the enter, enter key and I'm done. So in order to make changes to this, you can't burn it like this because it's in, of course it's in color and this is not set up to be burnt with a laser. So I use a plugin uh, by, in, uh, created by a gentleman by the name of Sean Murray. He's out on the, uh, one of the Facebook groups. I'll put links in the, in the description below, but he has a plugin called the Big Gimpin. Plugin V3. 
So what you have to do for at this point is you have to export this out as a JPEG. So I'm going to actually export this out as a JPEG image. I'm just going to call this uh, Joe. I'm going to put it over on my desktop and I'm going to export it out and quality. I'm going to leave this at 100. And then now I can go back and open this. I'm going to open up Joe, which is this is going to be the saved JPEG. And I'm going to run the Big Gimp and plugin. And as you can see, uh, this is a Python process. What it does is it asks you, do you, are you going to burn this on tile or are you going to burn it on wood? If I choose tile, what it's actually going to do, it's going to reverse the image. Because when Sean created this, this was actually a method to burn onto uh, white tile that's been painted black. So you get that kind of real cool looking uh, uh, image on uh, as it burns into black paint. But since we're burning onto white tile, we need it to be a positive image and not a negative image. So you can set your DPI here. I'm going to leave this at 600. Uh, 100 by 100 is fine. I'm going to change this to about 95 just because my tile is not quite four inches. So I'm going to leave that alone. What it's going to do, it's going to run through all of the filters and then now automatically it will go in here and it will change this to a negative image and as you can see as I zoom in here all the little dots that the laser uses to burn the image so what I need to do at this point though is since it is a negative a, a negative image it will not look it'll look this way on white tile so I don't want it to look that way so I need to change it to a positive real easy to do just go up to your color menu select colors and choose invert and then now this is exactly what you want just like this so now if you look in if I zoom in you'll see all the all the dots it's exactly how it's supposed to look okay so we're in Lightburn. we're going to go to file import we're going to pull in Joe one put him in there and as you can see Joe one is already set up by my looking at the width up here at 94.996 by 94.996 this is perfect for what I want to do for my tile you want to go up to your cuts layers tab if that hasn't been opened make sure that your line interval is set to 0.11 and the speed is set to 1200 or actually that's my speed 1285 percent burn rate you'll want to make sure that all the testing that we did prior to this that your particular speed and max power is set to uh, whatever you've tested and whatever you've burned your uh, your test tiles on to make sure that it's at the right speed and rate so from here all I got to do is click OK and make sure this is set up on the laser correctly remember you can hold the shift key down press the frame button here and it will draw a four inch by four inch frame around the tile so that way you can get it centered uh, it's a really quick and easy way to make sure that the tile is centered on the board before you start the burn and then after that's done you just click start and away we go guys once again thanks for joining us here on 3d print farm if you have any questions concerning burning these images on white tile please place them in the comments below I'd be glad to answer any and all questions hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you again next time on 3d print farm bye now what's going on you guys welcome back to 3d print farm today I'm gonna show you how to yeah drop them in the comments below. I'll be 
happy to try to answer any and all questions about burning these guys. <laughs> burning these guys on top. I'd like to say something about burning tiles. Hey guys, once again.